Hello AP STAT students, this is Mr. Hazelhorst. I hope you're ready for your first video lecture of the year. Uh, today we're going to focus in on just a brief introduction to statistics, uh, kind of what the, the big picture of statistics is, some other important terms that we're going to need to know as we get started this school year. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time in this video talking about different graphs that we'll use throughout this year in statistics. And some of these graphs you're already going to be familiar with, some of them may be new to you. Uh, the graphs that are new, if you don't understand the nuts and bolts of those, don't worry too much. Uh, we're going to work with those more next week. And also, as we work with all of these graph types over the course of the year, we'll get a deeper understanding of when we can use them and how we can use them. Uh, but again, today we just want to focus on a brief introduction. So let's get started with a little definition of statistics. So when we talk statistics, really what we're talking about is the science or art of learning from data. And data are just simply numbers with a context. We want to study something, all right? And we're going to use these statistics to draw conclusions about a population based on some information that we've taken from a sample. And so as you take a look at this diagram here, whenever we think statistics, we're always going to start at the population. So we have this population of interest that we want to study. Now, the reason why we don't just study the entire population in statistics is, well, if, if we're dealing with a really large population, let's say we wanted to do a study about, uh, about high school students in the United States of America. Well, that population would be huge and spread out over a really large area if we think from East Coast to West Coast to Hawaii, Alaska. Um, and so it'd take a lot of time and a lot of money to deal with every single individual within that population. So based on statistics, we know we don't need to deal with every single item of the population. Uh, we can make a, a, a good decision based on data that's going to come from a sample that represents that population well. So we'll start with the population. From that population, we'll choose a sample. And then from that sample, that's where we're going to collect our data. So when we talk about data and we say that they're numbers with a context, they're numbers specifically that come from a sample that's representing a population. All right, so from that data, as we study it, as we analyze it using all the different methods that we're going to cover over the course of this year, we're able to make, we're able to make wise decisions about the population. All right, so we say in statistics that we're making inferences. We're, gonna, we're going to infer from the data about the population. Uh, so then we get back to the population and we completed our circle, all right? So that's just a, a definition of statistics, and again, if that doesn't click, don't stress too much. We'll, we'll be dealing with this the entire year, okay? So now let's talk about the major themes of statistics. This year in AP Stats, we'll cover four major themes, and all four of these themes in entirety make up the process of statistics. So it's really going to take us the entire year uh, to understand the, the proper process of working with data from beginning to end. As you've been introduced to statistics uh, throughout your educational career, you've just been given small parts of, of what statistics really, really are. For most of you, the only thing that you've learned about in statistics would really just fall in part one of our four major themes, the exploratory data analysis. And that's what we're going to focus in on the early chapters of this class. Chapters 1 through 4 will deal with uh, exploratory data analysis. Chapter 5 will get into part 2, which is producing data. And then chapters 6 through 9 slash 10, there's a little overlap there, will focus in on probability. And that will basically make up the first semester of AP Stats. And, and then from chapters 10-ish and on, uh, we'll deal with inference, and that's really the nuts and bolts of statistics. But all of these things that come before inference really support it, and so we need to have an understanding of all of those things. So that's just a, a brief snapshot of where we're going to go this semester, or this, this school year. So next I want to just talk about a couple of terms that we need to be aware of as we work throughout this, uh, this school year, and these terms are going to pop up pretty early on. Um, and they're pretty simple. So the first term that we want to talk about are individuals. Right? We can think of the individuals of who are we studying. Right? Generally, they're people. They can be animals. They can be things. Uh, and from those whos, those individuals, we're then going to study some characteristic about them. And that's what we call the variable. And the variable is really what makes up our data. When we talk about numbers in context, uh, that's the variable. Um, and again, it could be anything. Maybe it's 
it's the the weight of a baby or the height of basketball players right babies would be the individuals weight would be the variable um, you know those are just a couple of examples all right our variables can be broken down into two different categories we can deal with a categorical variable uh, which is any time that we're going to take data and we're going to place it into groups or categories. Um, and a lot of times you can think of these as qualitative things. Uh, eye color would be an example of a categorical variable, right? We're not going to be able to, to measure that, but we're going to assign that into a category. Maybe you've got blue eyes or green eyes or brown eyes. Um, your favorite type of food would be a categorical variable. Quantitative variables are things that take on numbers, and this is what we're going to deal with 95% of the time in statistics. Occasionally, we'll work with some categorical variables, uh, but really, statistics is built around numbers. Uh, and if we can deal with numerical data, a lot more doors open to us as far as what we can use to analyze that data. So we're going to focus on things numerically. So that's just kind of a brief introduction of statistics and some terms that we want you to be aware of. So now let's spend the rest of this video uh, introducing some different types of graphs and just talking about them briefly. So as we introduce graphs, it's always a, a good question to answer. Why do we graph? And, and the sim it's a really a simple answer. Right? Graphs give us a quick snapshot of the data. Um, and it, it's easy for us to identify some patterns that would be hard to see in just a list of numbers or raw data. And truly, we do live in a visual world. Uh, with the technology advances we've made, most of us are used to, to taking information digitally off of a screen. And so graphs just support the way that, that, that we as people are kind of going. So whenever we analyze any data in this class, the very first thing we'll start with is a graph. A graph helps give us, give us an idea of just the basic characteristics um, about data, but those characteristics are going to be important as we make decisions in how are we going to analyze this data. And so this again boils down to the first theme of statistics. This is a part of exploratory data analysis, which is just simply the practice of analyzing distributions of data graphically and numerically. And over the course of the next four chapters, we're going to focus on different ways that we can just analyze distributions graphically and numerically. And the point is to find patterns or deviations from those patterns uh, so that we can make a decision about what do we need to do uh, in the inference theme of statistics that will come second semester. And so this is really an, a very important part of statistics, uh, and it's something that we'll get really good at is just quickly identifying a graph to use, uh, what it tells us about the data, and then moving on from there. So let's start off talking about some different categorical data displays that we'll use. And, and really it just boils down to two different types. And these are probably the graph types that you're most familiar with. If you think back to your elementary days when you may have graphed some data that you collected from your classmates, these were probably the types of graphs that you use. So again, remember a categorical variable is, is any time we take variables and we put them into labels or groups. Uh, and so we can represent that uh, with a pie chart. Uh, it gives us an idea of of, of each category's relation to the whole. And then the other common type is a good old bar graph. All right, And we can see how the heights of the bars compare to each other, uh, which gives us an idea of the comparison of each part, again, to the whole. And so these are two types of graphs that we'll see. We really won't create these a whole lot, but you do want to be able to read information off of them. Uh, and anytime we deal with a categorical uh, data, these are the two gri graph types that we'll choose from. So again, it's good to just be reminded of those and just kind of understand how you can read information off of those. As I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, a majority of the time we're going to work with quantitative data or numbers. And when we work with quantitative data, we have a lot more graph options available to us. Uh, and so some of these may be graphs that you've worked with before. Some of them may be new to you. All right. Uh, dot plots are probably the simplest type of graph when we just list out the numbers. Um, and then place a dot each time that data value appears, and you can see an example of a dot plot right here. Uh, again, just a very simple graph type. Um, in science class, you've probably oftentimes used a time plot where we just represent data over a period of time, and so you can see that here in our second graph type. And these are graphs that we'll use on occasion, uh, a dot plot more than a, a time plot, but we want to be aware of those. Uh, because they are useful ways to represent data. All right. 
What we're going to use more often, though, are the four graphs that you see towards the bottom here. Stem plots, histograms, augives, and box plots. And, and today I want to introduce you to the, the stem plot, histogram, and augive. We're going to save the box plot for later on in this chapter. Uh, and that's one that you've probably worked with before anyway. Okay, So let's talk a little bit about stem plots. Stem plots are pretty simple. We're going to take our numerical values, our data, and we're going to break them down into two parts. A leading digit that we call a, a stem, and then the last digit, which we'll refer to as the leaf, and we divide those out. And, and on this slide, you'll see two examples of stem and, and leaf plots. Um, they're very simple, and you can see that there's a, a graphical picture to it. It's almost like they take on the form of a bar graph as we as we place numbers off to the side here. So. If we just kind of you know drew a little graph here along that, you can just see the shape emerging from the stem plot. Um, and that's, that's, again, giving us a good representation of the data. Um, so we'll talk more about stem plots in detail on Monday. We'll do an in-class activity, and uh, we'll talk how do we create these and some different modifications that we can take. The stem plots will be one of the most common graph types that we use throughout this year. So it's one that we want to be very, very familiar with. Um, and the reason why we use them a lot is stem plots really use the same sorting technique that a computer uses. And with the advances of technology, um, they just become more and more prevalent. Most uh, computer programs based on statistics can kick out a stem plot very, very easily. So we'll see these quite often. Um, the big strength of a stem plot is that we can still see our original numbers. And I'll explain how this works more on Monday. Uh, the weakness is it really doesn't work well with large data sets. Um, manually they'd take a long time to create uh, again with the technology you can you can kick those out pretty quickly all right but again we're going to talk more about stem plots on Monday I just want to give you a brief kind of introduction to those so if you have questions about a stem plot um, don't stress too much about those uh, hopefully we'll get those answered on Monday the second most common type of graph that we'll use will be a histogram and a histogram looks a lot like a bar graph and and it would fall underneath the category of a bar graph, but it's a specific type of bar graph. Um, and it's used to represent information that's going to come from a frequency table. So you can think of it as a frequency table. It's just we're going to have these groups of data. So you can kind of get the example here from this histogram that's on the slide. All right, here we're representing uh, the results of an exam. So you can see the points category down here on the horizontal axis of the graph. So we've broken their exam scores into from 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30, so on. So those are the different groups. And then we'd be representing each frequency, how many students fell within each, tho each of those groups. Uh, and that's what a histogram is representing, is the frequency of data appearing in different groups. Now, the difference between a histogram and a bar gram, uh, histograms represent quantitative data. Bar graphs are generally used to represent qualitative data. So think things like eye color, hair color, you know, how many people have blue eyes, green eyes. We would represent that in a bar graph. Uh, and bar graphs have spaces between the bars. Histograms do not. And the reason for this is, again, we're dealing with numerical data. We want to represent the continuity of numbers. As we mentioned on the previous slide, histograms are going to, to represent data that's in a frequency table. And when we talk about frequencies in statistics, there's three different types of frequencies that we can deal with. All right? um, a relative frequency, which is when we take um, the tally of each group and we, we represent it as a percent. And relative frequencies are what we see represented in a, a pie graph or a pie chart. All right? A cumulative frequency is when we, we take the frequencies from a table, and as we work down the table from top to bottom, we accumulate the frequencies of each group. So those frequencies just continue to add to each other as we go down the table. And then a relative cumulative frequency is representing the sum of the percents that fall in or below a current class. So it's the idea of representing things in a relative frequency by percent, and then adding those percents as we work our way down the table. And we have to introduce frequencies because it's the relative cumulative frequency that's represented by our final graph type that we want to talk about today, and that's known as an, an augive. All right, so let's introduce that. 
Now, augives we won't use very often, but they pop up occasionally, so we want to be aware of them. But an augiv is just simply a type of line graph, and it's specifically a line graph that represents relative cumulative frequencies. Uh, the, the positive side of an augative is that the graphs always go up, or at worst, they level off. Uh, because again, you're accumulating the frequencies as you go. So as we read this augive, uh, I can see from 40 to 45, there's about 5% uh, in that group, because that's where the 45 ends when it, we look at its data point, right? And then from 45 to 50, that goes from about 5% to, I'm just going to rough estimate, about 20%. So what that tells me is there's about 15% of the data between 45 and 50. That's the growth that I'm seeing between those data points. And then from 50 to 55, we can see it goes from about 20 to about 50. So that means there's 30% of the data between uh, the 50 and 55 uh, groups. And so, that, again, that's just a simple way to, that we're accumulating data. And you might wonder, why do we do that? Uh, these are most often used in a business setting. If you work for a company and um, maybe you're a salesman and you've got to chart your sales over the last year, uh, you don't really want to show dips in your graph. You don't want to show areas where it goes down. That means your sales are bad. So a lot of times they'll represent sales data on an augive. They'll represent it as cumulative frequencies over the course of the year so that their graphs only go up or at worst, again, they level off. If they didn't make any sales, their data would stay the same as it accumulates. So... Uh, that's a common use of nogget. Again, we're not going to see them a lot, but they're something that we do want to be aware of. All right, folks, that brings us to the, the end of our first video lecture for this school year. Uh, I hope you were able to take some good notes. Remember, you'll be able to use those on any quizzes that we take throughout the year, so you want to have those handy. Uh, the final uh, thing that you need to do, uh, and this is what I use for your homework grade, is you need to complete that form on my website that's below the video. Uh, and that's just a simple place where you can put your name, your grade, your class period. Uh, you'll rank your level of understanding, and then there's a place for you to put any comments or questions you might have about this video so that you've got a chance to communicate back to me uh, before we cover this material on Monday. So please take the time to fill out that form. That's an important part of this process, and we want to get in the habit of that. If you do have any problems with the form, uh, please just send me an email uh, with the same information, and that will work as well. So I hope you guys had a, a great time enjoying this first video, and I will see you soon. Goodbye. Made with DoodleCast Pro.